What's good, superstars? Back with another digital collecting video. You got superstar Joe. You got superstar Rob in the building. How's it going, Rob? Pretty good. You, man, man, not bad, not bad. Guys, if you're new here, do not forget, become a superstar. Smash the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification so you know whenever we post some spicy meatball content like this one uh, for your faces. But I think we got a great, great point, a great, great thing to talk about here um, that hopefully uh, people take notice of and uh, and hopefully some of these up and coming <laughs> projects implement some of these thoughts because I think it'd be really good for the space. Um, you can also become a VIP member two nine a month. Hit the join button under the video. Get one of those stars next to your name. Super duper rares. We're still looking for you. Hopefully soon, soon we see some in the comments. Um, also, uh, you can join us on X or on Instagram if you want to slide in the DMs. We have open DMs. You can talk to us there, but also on Discord, you can talk to us. You can talk to the rest of the superstars who are very, very active. Like I, I, I thought it would slow down. I thought we would have a Discord. You go in there. You want to talk to people, uh, and every so often it'd be quiet. But like I'm, I'm jumping in there, and it's just popping all the time every single project that we cover on the channel plus more that we don't even cover in there and people are still chatting it up because they love the space they love how digital uh toys and digital collectible space is going to move forward and they have great discussions there and great thought processes on our discord i mean if you want to meet lots of interesting and uh educated and smart people on on, on this topic you should definitely check out the discord Listen, guys, we love giving back on this channel. Um, we take a lot of pride in doing monthly gifts uh, to our viewers. And the one of the best ways to do that is to join the Discord. All of our links and all of our utility is through that Discord. You tell us if you use any of our affiliate links at all, we have chats available to you to let us know. And at the end of the month, we compile who did that. We assign you stars and then we roll the random number generator. Uh, generator. So if you guys participate, we would love high participation because the more participation we have, the more we can get back. Yeah. To this I mean, I mean uh, all right. We're not even going to go to the news today because I think I think we were kind of being light on, on the whole driving the utility down everybody's throats and talking about how important we feel like utility is in this space. So I'm going to bring up a tweet from uh, a CEO that we track in the space, um, Will. Will Weinrob, <laughs> he's CEO of Cryptoys. Uh, they're building a digital toy platform, if you're not familiar. But uh, he puts out some some great stats from time to time. Here's one of them. Reports show that children aged 5 to 12 spend an average of three hours per day on digital devices. This shift in consumer play patterns from physical to digital is not a fleeting trend, but a fundamental change that will be felt in the toy and collectible industry for decades to come. I want to just talk about this. And what it means, at least to me, and how I understand the space of collecting overall. Like, I mean, it's going. We're we're moving into a space, in my opinion, and I, apparently in the opinion of st statistics, that digital is going to be the new place to be. Now, what does that mean? I think that it means that we're going to have a competition for what is the better digital item, digital toy, digital collectible. Um, that's going to be fighting for market share here. Uh, so if we're going to be comparing digital thing to digital thing, for them to have no utility, it's going to be very difficult, I feel like, for um, for people to look at uh, in a way when digital has so much more uh, that it could do. Like digi having something digital means that you open up an array of things that physical cannot do. If that's you're right. just making a digital version of a physical then really you're not adding any extra value than having that physical. And in, in fact, you might be adding less value than having the physical because if it does nothing, at least the physical you can look at, you can touch it, you can feel it, and you can show it off with uh, people who come around in your house. It's not the same as having a digital thing that does nothing. Rob, what do you think on the, this? The digital medium is going to be extremely unique. First of all, it has many advantage, advantages over the physical because you can do things with it that are just way more imaginary, uh, way more creative. Just the potential of the digital realm and what it can offer is just completely out of this world. Back in the 1960s, they didn't have this option. You needed to rely solely on that physical medium, that physical toy, for example, uh, for your, your entertainment. But as this stat shows us that Will's pointing at, because you know, crypto is there in the business of making digital toys. Um, People crave, especially adolescents, right? They crave these digital games. Um, that's why these systems, they do so well, right? You got the Nintendo Switch. You got the PS5. 
you have all these things and it just it's just a great uh it's just another great way for entertainment um you know you don't always want to watch a movie but maybe you would love the challenges that can come from games so i think what's happening now is and what will's trying to say is that this fundamental shift of children going digital means that they're going to be wanting digital toys and they're going to be wanting digital entertainment and there's not a lot of that like you do have this 2d what we've seen so far you can kind of go on this your your computer screen you can have this the you know, 2d games you can have your ipad that has fun games but we know where this we know how the technology is evolving we're we're entering a new world where we're gonna have way more ar experiences and ai experiences that are going to completely change the dynamics of digital toys and and digital toys are not really a thing like right now if you say that to someone you're like what are you talking about well imagine toy story in real life imagine an ar darth vader that can literally speak like darth vader organically and communicate with you just brings a whole new like <laughs> a whole new meaning to the word imaginary friend right like yeah. it just changes everything so i think this is what world's going with this this is what cryptos is trying to do and i think he's saying there's a lot of potential in the future for that i mean look at look at the real world and look at any other industry i mean let's talk about storytelling we started out with storytelling in books in paper format i mean actually let's go way back we we, we etched it on walls in the Egyptian times, we were drawing pictures of what we wanted to tell a story of. You can even go further back and talk about like the invention of paper and how that was a way to tell a story. First it was verbal, then you wrote down on paper. Uh, evolution of industry, evolution of time here. Uh, then we got comics <coughs> to tell our stories of our superheroes, our favorite uh, heroes. And then came the cinema, the, the films, the movies that everybody knows and loves. That is way bigger of an industry than the comic book industry i hate to break it to you guys but that's just the facts like as technology evolves so does where people's interests and time and 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 abilities uh to to intake this media uh goes so as more and more technology comes uh examples are like token gating and like rob mentioned ai ar these are things that will not be able to be avoided um, they will either be implemented or you will, the other stuff will still exist. The things that do nothing will still exist, but the, the main focus of people's attention will go towards where the technology has gone as just like it's done over the last years. No one's writing on their walls to tell you a story anymore in hieroglyphics. They're not doing it. It's not happening because there's new technology that allows you to do it in a better way. Just like people aren't going to want to collect toys physically as much anymore because the digital one's going to let you go to a token gate, you going into an environment and doing whatever you need to do in that environment because we now have this technology that proves ownership. So to have technology that proves ownership and then have a collectible that does nothing, it doesn't utilize the technology. So what's the point of having the technology tied to it? It's just going to be something that gets really passed by really quickly because it doesn't do anything. And we're not the only ones who think this, Rob. Did you know that? We're not the only ones who think this. Look at this, this quote right here from Notorious Moonboy. Only if said toys and collectibles have utility that keeps them involved. So we know that he's really looking for a project to keep utility around, to have a roadmap with, uh, with a utility-based roadmap, with gamification plans for the fully rigged collectibles. Um, so I know that Notorious Moonboy is very excited for what some of these projects that we track on the channel have coming up. Uh, but also I think that that is very, very true. I think that we need to see this to have this shift in digital collecting actually matter and actually capture the eyes of the regular consumer. Because if it's not different from what they already know, then they're not gonna be looking around. Look, you see evolution in the space, right? NFT started off with just a simple PFP and then now evolved into this 3d token gating approach with the platforms and i think for uh, a lot of you know the last six years um it's been okay right like you've been able to have digital collectibles that may not be fully rigged for games that may have zero utility uh that are purchased for literally no other reason than speculation um or you know the hope that maybe one day you can project it into ar space and it could be geo-referenced right like these are things that maybe, you know, made people buy them. But I think as time goes on, 
you're going to see that there's no really, really, there really is no reason to have digital collectibles that are not fully rigged. Um, I think that if you're in the digital realm, um, you have to fully rig these collectibles and you have to give them utility. I think that the masses, when they come, they're not interested in things that do nothing. They're not interested to express themselves with a PFP that they have to spend money on. They want utility from it. And I don't know if it's going to matter. I mean, if the utility is going to be a digital toy that can do AI, can do these things. And yes, AR matters then because in an AR format, it can give you this AI experience. It can do all these things. Then I agree. Like then that makes sense to be in a 3D format. But even if it's a 2D format, as long as there's utility, this is what the future masses and the average Joe is going to want to have. They're not going to want things that do nothing. And I think there's going to be a paradigm shift in the space. I think we're, we're starting. It's starting. And really, Cryptoids is leading it. Um, when they actually deliver on a game, which they have some mini games, when they actually deliver that gamified platform first, then they for sure are leading it. Uh, but we know digital collectible companies are out there right now selling digital collectibles with fully rigged collectibles that can be gamified. They're preparing for the future. This is what I think every digital collectible company must do. They must prepare for the future. Do not create collectibles that are not 100% fully rigged for games. And do not create a system in which utility is not the sole purpose of the system. Because if you don't do that, I think as time goes on, it's going to be really hard to keep up with the companies that are doing that. And I think if if we do see any kind of representation of IRL collecting in the digital format, uh, it's going to have to be adaptable to whatever environments are the most popular. So if Meta comes out with a metaverse that is the number one metaverse, like your Facebook or your uh, Instagram, something where a lot of people hang out, these collectibles better be able to be visible in those spaces. Um, that might mean ownership. That might mean token gating. That might mean self-custody of some sort of your collectibles. Walled gardens in companies that are not the number one metaverse or virtual world or whatever it is are going to be even less valuable um, because that is going to be where people are going to be looking so uh, i think i think we have to really turn our expectations up a little bit of our favorite platforms and want them to innovate and develop and create things that don't exist uh compared to what already exists in the real world or else what are we even doing here like this is something we want to we want to see this entire space change. We want to see collecting in general change. In order to do that, we have to change what collecting is. And by doing that, we're going to have to see some utility. We're going to have to see fundamental change, as Will says here, um, that is felt in the toy and collectible industry. Uh, and, and they're only going to feel it if we're doing something that they cannot do. And I think yeah. ut that's where utility comes in. And that's where... Uh, Every other digital collectible is going to zero if they don't get up to up to that part. Right? D dare we say that digital collectibles are going to zero? And I think I think if you think about the future and what the consumer is going to want, I, I mean, I what's going to happen? Are these things going to be worth pennies? I mean, take it to the limit of zero. Like, I mean, I know some people are very specific with the language sometimes, but what is going to be the reason that a market would want to purchase? digital collectibles that have no purpose whatsoever, but then just to be existing in AR. And that's it. I'm not sure there's the appetite for that. Now, we've heard arguments that there are other reasons that may be valid. We don't know in the future, like, you know, if it's first on blockchain or, or, or whatever, and that remains to be seen what happens as time goes on. But what we are seeing, the actual data actually shows is a downtrend uh, in volume, in downtrend in liquidity, a downtrend in general of of things that are do nothing and that have no they have no reason to be owned uh most people yeah. buy them for purely speculation reasons and i think that's wrong i think that the space needs to evolve and it needs to be a space in which people buy these things because they want to use them they want verified ownership for a benefit for an actual benefit what I'm seeing right now are digital collectibles are just a means, a conduit for speculation. People inventing reasons on why they think it's going to be worth a lot of money in the future. That's wrong. 
That is the opposite approach. And I have to give hats off to crypto toys. From day one, these things have been marketed as digital toys. You should not be buying these things as investments, period. These things are digital toys. They're designed for utility. They're designed to be used in the future by the masses. And they don't even know they're using NFTs. This is the future. And this is exactly the dream, I think, most people in this space have for digital collectibles at, at all. Is that they will be purchased and used for reasons and the masses of people buying them don't even know their NFTs. This is where the space needs to go. And I think just no utility. I just don't see a place for that. I mean, look at the look at the history. Look at sports cards. Back in the day, people used to collect them. They used to trade them with their friends. But they still would go out and put them up against the wall. And you would flick a sports card at the other one, try and knock it down, and then play games that way. Like They, they would make gamification out of cardboard because that's what they had at the time. Um, not knowing that the value might come later uh, just based off of whatever. Same with Pokemon cards. Like there's still people who played Pokemon. They went to tournaments. They did Pokemon tournaments. Uh, a lot of collectibles had some sort of physical utility. Pogs, there had Pog tournaments. Crazy Bones had a game tied to it. There's always that type of utility that you were able to do something even with some of these physical <clears throat> collectibles. Um, so I think, I think where we're going with this is um, we have to see from any of these companies in the space a reason for the person who doesn't collect in this space to come collect i was just having a, a coffee with a friend uh who who's big into collecting sports cards and i said do you care about first on blockchain like do you think that will even matter he's like no I, like the first ever appearance of something would matter more to me like the first rookie card of some of, of the player would be the first time that it's it's portrayed in physical medium or in any medium. So that would be why he would go for that. But when he, we, I said, okay, so how about like a comic book uh, versus a t-shirt or something like that? It doesn't matter. And he's like, the, in his opinion, the first time that it appeared, and it was something that we've said on the channel, the first time that it's ever appeared is something that probably will carry that first uh, appearance value. So, yeah. I got to jump in here just uh, Go before I forget speaking about the baseball cards. Like, let's be real here. You think anyone is, who's in the business of collecting baseball cards is having a great time. If their goal is to make money, like the majority of these things are going to be worthless, right? Like every time we do a video talking about FA, people always say, Oh, what about this physical sports card? They do nothing. And look at, there's some of them that are worth a ton of money. We're talking to like the 0.0001%. That doesn't mean it's not going to also happen here. But like the 99.999% are completely worthless or they're at least going to be less than what you spend on them. So if you're in this space for speculation reasons only, just understand that you're, you're, in a, you're playing a risky game, right? Like especially if what you're buying is intended to have no utility. It's not going to do anything. Like what, what do, you, do you really think all these baseball cards of the past, even the, some of the OG Pokemon cards, if they're super common – there's still so many of them that they're just, they're really not like that important. There's, there's it's something like the, to say. There's something to say about keeping something in condition as well when it comes to collecting. That's true. That's true. And on, on digital, we don't have that. Like you don't have to keep it in good condition. So what's, what's that value that you get added from having something in such good condition over such a long right. period of time uh, is never going to exist digitally. It's never going to exist because you don't have to do anything to maintain that condition. So people pay for that. Like even when it comes to cars, maintaining an old classic car, Absolutely. 100%. they have people will pay more for that car that is maintained better than a car that's 60 years old. It's the first ever Ford, but it's falling apart. The rims are falling off. They're not going to go spend the same amount of money. Why? Because so, it hasn't had the same care, right? When it comes to cars, if you have a vintage car, that's a matching number car. So the VIN number of the engine matches yeah. the VIN number of the car, and you know it's from LA, and it's a it's a it's a you know an LA car. It's worth absolutely more because it's hard. It's hard after over fifty years. It's hard to have these things in these conditions. Yeah. You know, if it's never been rusted. Like all these things matter when it comes to the physical world. In the digital, there's no tarnishing. It's all going to be just the same forever. And I think this people using the physical world as a perfect benchmark to talk about how digital collecting, it, those who are driven by speculation, okay, I'm referring to those ones specifically. If you're someone who just buys it because you like it, that's fine. You're doing the right thing. But if you're a speculator, 
keep in mind that there's absolutely no scarcity that goes beyond this point. You have only one thing to rely on in the digital world, and that is utility. And I think as time goes on, as the millions of mints of all these things, like you're going to have copies of these things. You're going to have multiples of these things. You're going to have different versions of these things. You're going to have free versions of these things. We already talked about That's that. It. For free, you could just download them and have them projected in your space. I think as time goes on, people will realize that it's only utility that will make these things actually have masses of people want to come into the space and be participants in it. And, and that's that where and that's where self custody and token gang are very important because if you hold the token that's associated with the collectible, if you hold it and if you have the key that gives you access to the platform with the collectible, or you can use that key somewhere else for future interoperability. That's going to matter to people that you have the ability to move around with it, to, to be able to buy it, sell it, trade it, whatever you want to do, because that's another big part of how the utility will come. You're not limited to the utility from the, the seller, like whoever the company is in real life. If they sell you a toy at the store, you go buy it. Doesn't mean you can't go and use it at your friend's house or at wherever and do a different game with it. like it's it's something a little bit different so uh i think i think we've nailed all of the points here um yeah. utility is going to be basically the driver whereas physical uh collecting has been being able to keep something in perfect condition over a certain amount of time that maybe had scarcity to it or whatever but uh i mean th i think people have been looking for that measure like what's the measure to create that same type of rating system people we've seen trying to make rating systems for comic digital comics or make rating systems for all this stuff the rating system is what can it do for you how much eyeballs can you get on it because of all the great utilities that it has and i think we're going to see that over time as those utilities yeah, develop. And, and i think that we have what we have to understand is that we have to stop speculating yeah. i think people people get wrecked uh, stop speculating buy things for the right reasons if you're going to buy something, buy it for the right reasons, because if you're going to speculate, you're going to like, we don't know the future. I mean, when we say it, that digital collectibles are all going to zero, we don't know about actual valuations. The point we're trying to make is that the demand won't necessarily be there. And people are going to say, well, I want that other thing that actually I'm buying it because I want to use it for practical reasons. And that other stuff, I can't think of a practical reason to own it. So I don't want to, I don't want to buy that. We have no idea on the spectrum of where these things land. We don't know. We don't, this is not the purpose of this video. We don't know what's going to be super crazy. What's not going to be super crazy. All we know is that when the masses come into the space, we always talk about people coming into the space, new users. These are the yeah. words we use. They're going to favor what they can do with this thing, period. And the past 2017, 2018, 2019, up to 2023, it was a lot of, well, how much money can I make on this? It was a lot of, let me flip this and make money. It's all, it was all about money. It was all about speculation. I think Those you're making a are great gone. point there. A great point that you just made there because I've heard recently in the space um, that it's just going to come back. The FOMO is just going to come back to the space and everything's just going to ride the wave just like it did last time. And I think that's very naive thinking i think if you're buying something just because well crypto cycles and when crypto cycles then nfts will cycle because they did last time and then whatever meme coins and all this stuff if you're looking at it that way like you're very naive in in what's going to happen here um if you remember and if you go back in time when nfts were a craze it was you can you can tell that that was a big pump and big dump type of cycle um, people didn't know what they're getting into. People were still understanding what this type of technology means. And now they have not, they don't have the same easy way up because people know and understand now how NFTs have been around. And now it's about convincing people that they're not a scam. It's about convincing people I, that they're not going to lose all their money, putting it into this stuff. I mean, even if you look at, at, at meme coins or any other altcoins, um, from the first crypto run in 2017, then you go to the next one in 2021. A lot of those coins that ran in 2017 did not run in 2021. Why is that? Because people advance their thinking. They understand a little bit more. They understand a little bit better. They want more from a project. So the first time it was any coin. Oh, this coin's going to do this. This coin's going to do that. Next time it was a little bit more fundamental, has to do a little bit more stuff. And then now on whatever the next time that things run, people are going to be looking for what can they do with these NFTs. If they can't do anything, they're going to think it's a scam.
And we don't necessarily know what's going to happen. I mean, I did a video a while ago. I brought up a research paper talking about, is it really correlated? Is the crypto uh, market truly correlated to the NFT market? You know, at that time, the conclusion of the article was there really wasn't enough data, but it was sort of suggesting that it wasn't. And it was actually kind of unique and it would be considered kind of a separate class uh, than cryptocurrency. Um, but we don't know what's going to happen. Sure. Can, can there be another NFT run? I mean, maybe I mean, it can happen, but you're just getting lucky, right? Like, do you really want to just rely on just like some like luck or some like natural cycle or, or do you want to just start buying these things for the right reasons so that you're not buying these things thinking that you're going to be a billionaire? Like literally, like you see things on Twitter, people actually believe that their entire financial hopes and dreams are reliant on these things that are not made from day one to be a financial instrument. These things are made to be something other than that. They're meant for entertainment. So the maximum entertainment is the ones that I want to have, right? I don't want to buy things for the sake of it. I want to buy things that can maximize my entertainment, which is why utility is so important to us, to me, and to probably many of you watching. For those who are watching that it's not that important, Okay, you're the minority. Fine. You buy what you like. And as long as you're buying it for the right reasons, I don't see an issue here. But let's be real. You still probably want this space to be successful, meaning you probably want a lot of utility. And 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 utility, I think, is the only way this space is going to grow and take it to the next level. And I think it's coming. I think it's going to come. And I think over the next number of years, we're going to see more and more real meaningful utility in the NFT space, in the digital collectible space. And I'm going to call them digital toy space. Uh, because with utility, you have these benefits um, and the PFP space too. like Pudgy Penguin started off as that PFP. They evolved. They have a game now, a two day game that's, online. That's a token right. in itself right now. If, if it's self custody of the image, that image gets you access to certain other things. Now you're talking self custody tokens. They have digital games that you can access over there uh, in all different kinds of ways. So uh, it's 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 not limited to 3D collectibles, not limited to anything, but pushing the space forward making it something that people want to hold for reasons and not just because is something that I think is still uh, super important. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, but I, I mean, uh, let us know what you think in the comments. What do you feel about this space? How do you see this going forward? No, there's some of you who think you can hold it and people are going to care about first appearance on blockchain. Um, but I'm not convinced and I haven't heard anything that will convince me otherwise uh, until we see how this, this all plays out. I mean, everybody I talk to, and in the real world are the normal people that want to that want to learn what the heck are you doing YouTube about all the time. They don't get it. And uh, no. I mean, in, unless we're telling them, oh, I could do this. And when I show them certain things that are possible, I show them the Pudgy Penguin project, then they start to get interested. You see their ears perk up. Uh, so, I mean, what's going to get all of them who aren't here coming in and starting to look at our stuff? Uh, I think we can talk about all those things on this video. So we've literally done YouTube for two and a half years every single day about this space. So we are we are pretty knowledgeable to explain this to the common person. All right, yeah. we have a pretty good sense of exactly the space, the different players, how these things work. I have never had anybody tell me it's a great idea until I bring up utility. Yeah. Like they just want to know, like, what can I do with these things? Period. Like that's the question. Just 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 stop talking. What can I do with these things? And if you don't have a good answer, there's many good answers. One of them could be you can play games with them. But if you don't have a good answer of what you can do with these things, if you say you can literally just collect it. Good luck. You're not going anywhere with that Go long, long term. And if you are someone who's involved in these companies, if you're somebody who has the power to make a change and to and actually evolve and, and take feedback and make a real difference, I don't know how you watch videos like this or you look around this space and you're not on the same board as us that utility is going to be the utmost importance going forward in the future. What worked in the past may not necessarily work in the future. What made you great in the past may not necessarily make you great in the future. And that's the point. It may, right. Sometimes you have to change. So, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. It's safe to say will not. Will not. Not may not. But anyway. Yeah, guys, let us know in the comments below. <laughs> What's your opinion on this? Do you believe that digital collectibles are going to zero? Uh, do you believe that utility is everything? That utility is the main message here? Uh, digital toys, this is the way that the future has to be. We want to hear your thoughts. Let us know in the comments if you haven't already. Don't forget, come to Star, smash, subscribe, and join the Super Fam. Hit the bell if you want to see every single video, every single day. I'll thank you to our VIPs, two nine a month. Start with your name, ask for your giveaways, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. See you next one. Love Bye. you. Bye.